Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will only be doing a tiny little thing and then we will be wrapping this series up. Because currently we have reached the point at which I actually stopped making the system and then uh, I used that as a foundation to build the, the game sort of test that I show in the teaser trailer for the series. So I, I went with all the things that we had learned so far and I replaced my characters with other assets I had. I replaced animations with other animations. I created new blend spaces. I started creating new uh, abilities and uh, status effects according to what my animations were and what I wanted to have. So like stun effects and things like that. I uh, uh, put in environments uh, also. Uh, to give a more rounded feel to the whole experience just to see what would it look like. I replaced all the UI elements with different uh, UI assets to make them look a little bit better as well and replaced all the icons and things like that. So it was all a matter of like uh, just building upon further about what we have already done, right? So we have built a foundation and again, I want to note this <laughs> yet another time the the combat system and the magic system is not essentially what i consider the foundation these were just examples of how you could go about starting to create those things because these things are something that's very often used and um, not that well handled in most cases so i wanted to show you how you both could make those things and have them interact with uh, the existing systems which were the all the stuff that we have in um, uh, in RPG series when it comes to abilities, when it comes to attributes, when it comes to status effects, when it comes to gameplay tags, uh, and all of those things. So I consider them more part of the foundation than I do the combat and magic system, because these would change. In an RPG, since RPGs can be made in very different ways, um, they will look and feel very different and also play very different which means that those things would vary a lot while the attributes and gameplay tags and stuff like that are pretty much unison among all the different uh, RPGs you can consider making essentially so so that those are more like uh, concepts of like use cases essentially the magic and the combat and what we see here on the screen here is also what we will be showing an example of what we could be doing to prevent th things like this. Because if you remember, our death animation plays when uh, we get injured beyond our life total. And uh, we don't actually stop playing animations until we have actually started blending out from the animation. Um, so I will just be showing that a little bit quickly. Uh, let's go to our combat and let's go here and over here we if you remember we created a little bit of code here where we said uh, death occurred uh, which is reacting to the death listener uh, which is in turn reacting to um, health being changed and this is where we're setting the, the state dead here so when we're getting damaged we're changing it setting the state to dead when we're getting the state dead we're actually playing the animation so uh, what we would be doing in these cases when we are dead and don't want to um, react to things anymore, we could and should uh, stop having listeners. So if we were to go and say, um, let's remove this, uh, our component, so if we get our component Actually, we need to do this before we unpossess also, because we don't want to lose our character just yet. Uh, like so. So we have the character over here. We can get component by class. Uh, and for example, we, we may not want to... Uh, let's get the attribute one, for example. So now we may not want to listen to our health being changed anymore. Uh, which means we would then say um, uh, 
what's the best way to do this actually? I think this is fine. Yeah, so essentially if we have our component here, we can type in um, unbind. You can see, we can say unbind all events for attribute health changed, for example, which is the one that we have uh, up here. So this means that uh, we tell our character to stop listening for these events, which means that if we play now and demonstrate this, uh, the point at which we are actually getting killed is the point where uh, first we tell to not listen to the health changed anymore, then we unpossess the character, which means that we're no longer attached to it, we can't control it and things like that. But also it will no longer now be reacting to, to damage. The character, the AI is still attacking it, of course, because it doesn't have any logic to stop, of course. But just so you understand that um, there are... And we have shown this earlier in different tutorials where in like abilities and such, if we go and show, uh, I do believe we have at least, I hope we have. Uh, here. So we bind the dispatchers on events and we also unbind uh, event dispatchers. And, and the reason for this is we don't want to keep listening on them when they're no longer necessary. And this is one of these situations where we're just killed off the character. There's no need to listen for these events anymore. So you need to, to clean up those things when it feels like it's no longer relevant anymore. I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, became a little bit messier here than I had wanted it to be, but that's fine for now. I hope the point gets across. Anyway, so... So this is the foundation that we have created and moving forward, what I was thinking we would do is uh, I will be taking the project as it is right now in this episode. And if you want to follow along with these things, you may want to make a backup of the situation when it is right this, like this. And I figured we could take a few different uh, use cases. So... Uh, there have been some questions about how you can do certain things throughout the series and I've tried to explain them, but it might not be as clear as me actually demonstrating. So I was thinking I could take the project as it is now, take one use case at a time and then show you could do this in, for example, this way. So you could get a sense of how you can make use of the foundation that we have created to build upon further and uh, create whatever it is that you are after creating to give you some inspiration essentially uh, but i want you to remember that this is just a foundation so it will be needing tweaking at least minimally depending on what you want to do but depending on what you're after creating you might want to tweak it a lot as well and i'm not just talking about adding abilities and such things you may want to have uh, different ways in which you spawn different things like for example if you wanted to have uh, currently we have things like uh, we have a begin play here where we are setting up our basic stuff uh, this wouldn't work very well in a multiplayer environment for example if you want to remake it into a multiplayer environment but if you're probably going to do that you, you probably already know that uh, you want to hook on different events you want to have things like uh, on the possessed events to drive things and things like that and um, you probably would end up with situations then where you would have a pawn without a controller for a bit which means that you end up in situations where uh, maybe validations don't work as well where you would have something that like uh, whenever we're getting a component by class for example if we're getting an owner at some point in some component or in some code and that um, component doesn't have an owner yet or if uh, a pawn doesn't have a controller yet then it would not be returning a valid reference and then getting a component for that would not work well and stuff like that so you would have to put in more validations to make sure that your code is safe and handles these things gracefully um, but yeah, this is essentially where I stopped when I created when I decided to create the, the trailer for the series 
and it didn't take me long at all to create all of these new abilities and new um, effects and status effects and put in the animations and everything like that. It was actually pretty quick, um, which is one of the benefits of having created a gameplay framework like we have currently. Even though, again, this is just the foundation. Even the framework that we have currently can be built upon. Uh, th the base classes for abilities, for example, uh, this is a start, but you may want to have more logic in here or more events to hook into or more checks against resources and things like that. But overall, most of it is created in such a way that it's um, packed into components, although there are uh, intercommunication between components, which is... Of course, not great if it's too tightly knitted, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult if you wanted to, say, um, have a completely different system for, I don't know, let's say abilities or something like that. You had a completely different ability system and our ability system maybe called some certain components. To completely cut out the ability system and the ability component and then put in the the communication between the other components that we created here and the ability component that you have should be fairly easy, uh, although it, it requires, of course, some intimate knowledge about the ability system. So hopefully you created that system so you know how it works in and out and stuff like that. The, the main takeaway from this series, I hope, is that you walked away with a sense of having learned to do things in a different way that's hopefully better than what you knew before so that you can feel like you can both approach problems in a different way and you have a different uh, alternative to certain things but also to give you inspiration on how you can make things that we have done here even better because there's always room for improvement in all systems so yeah that is all I wanted to go through in this episode. And there won't be any more episodes of this series, only the use cases. But I hope to see you in those as well. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.